Hi everyone, my name is George and I'm a senior multimedia engineer at Collabora. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about transporting media through containers uh, using Pipewire. Now you may ask yourselves, uh, Pipewire is an audio service, right? No, in fact, it's not just that. It's known as an audio service, but it's, it's actually something that enables processes to share any kind of media with each other and, and share also devices with these processes. So it, it, it allows transporting audio and video um, between any process in the system. It is built so that it has uh, support for containers right from the beginning and a built-in security system, which we'll see. Um, in overall, this is how, um, how the Pipewire system looks like. So there, uh, there are applications, all these green boxes at the top, uh, these are applications that connect to Pipewire crossing through the various security barriers, uh, be it containers or, or something else. And they connect to Pipewire and they create uh, so-called nodes, which are objects that represent the streams of these applications. And these nodes uh, then connect to each other and they form a pipeline that then allows media to flow from one application into another. Let's see a simple example. Um, we have an application. Let's say we have a system that needs to uh, receive a camera feed, camera feed from the network using a network camera. And then it needs to display this camera and also record its contents. These are three distinct functions. Um, something that receives the feed from the network, something that displays the feed to the display, and something that records on the disk. Now, without Pipewire, this needs to be one application that handles all these three. Um, with Pipewire, we can actually split this functionality into three different applications. We can have one application that receives the content, one that displays it, and one that records to the disk. And this can be done without any additional overhead since transferring media through Pipewire is zero copy. In a graph, this looks like this. We have three distinct applications, the receiver, the viewer, and the recorder. They connect to Pipewire and Pipewire acts as a bus. It, it uh, allows these applications to be linked together and allows media to flow from one to the other. Now, I said Pipewire is container ready. Um, in fact, while this can be uh, implemented with these three applications running natively on, on, on the same host as Pipewire, um, in fact, it's not necessary. We can have these three applications in different containers. Um, and we can restrict the functionality that is provided to each of those so we have a system that looks like this. We have a container A that runs the network camera receiver, has access to the network and to pipe wire and nothing else. It doesn't have access to the display and it doesn't have access to the storage. And then we have a second container with the viewer that has access to the display and pipe wire, but nothing more. And finally, we have container C with the camera recorder application that has access to storage and that's all. And all these three have to connect to Pipewire and they have to, to, to open a socket to connect to Pipewire. Now, these connections to Pipewire are restricted connections. And that means that these applications, because they are coming from different containers, they do get access to Pipewire, but they cannot do much with that connection. They cannot uh, really see the other clients that are connected to Pipewire and they cannot change settings or manipulate devices um, or things like that. They can only do what they are intended to do and what we allow them to do. Now, 
let's see how this works. In a typical restricted, sorry, in a typical socket connection, um, we have the application sending a connection request to the application that has the socket. In this case, it's Pipewire. And then Pipewire returns a file descriptor. And then the application can uh, freely send um, data to this socket and communicate with that application. In Pipewire, um, this is the, the most simple case. Like, uh, when we have application, audio applications, for example, in our desktop machines, they connect like that. But when we are talking about sandboxing, we have two different security models that can be applied. The security model one works like this. The application coming from the container has access to the socket, right? So it sends a connect event to that socket asking Pipewire to, to connect. Then Pipewire it, internally, it has an, a module that um, applies permissions for that client. Basically, Pipewire internally tracks every client separately and tracks the permissions of each client separately. Um, so every client can access different objects uh, with different permissions inside Pipewire. Even though it can send protocol messages, the responses are basically filtered by Pipewire. So it, if, for example, the application is asking to uh, read an object that it doesn't have read access to, then Pipewire will return that this object doesn't exist, for example. Uh, so it, all this logic is handled internally in, in Pipewire. So the application connects and Pipewire applies initial permissions and then it returns a file descriptor to that application. But this file descriptor is initially blocked. That means that the application cannot really write to it or maybe it can write but it will not get any response from Pipewire yet. Now the fourth step, what happens next, is that Pipewire notifies the session manager um, in in this case, WirePlumber. It notifies that there is a new client. And then WirePlumber has some logic to look at this client, inspect it, see what kind of client it is, and apply a set of permissions to that client. Um, typically, this is to allow the client to actually see the Pipewire core object, which is the main uh, connection object and also to give it some permission to create streams. Now, on the sixth step, Pipewire unblocks the connection. After the permissions are applied, Pipewire unblocks the file descriptor. So now the application can freely talk to Pipewire and, and look at what objects there are. But since we have applied permissions, it won't be able to list all the objects available. Um, but most likely it will be able to create a stream because that's what the application is for, right? So we have applied permission that enables this application to create a stream. So on the seventh step, the application creates a stream. And when it creates a stream, uh, again, nothing happens in Pipewire. Uh, Pipewire then instead notifies the session manager that there is a new stream available. And then the new stream is, uh, appears in the session manager's logic and the session manager chooses what to do with the stream. If it is, um, if it is allowed for this application to create this, this kind of stream, then this new stream is indeed linked to a target. So it gets linked to another uh, node that may be another application or maybe a device. Otherwise, if the application is not permitted to create this kind of stream, then an error is returned and the application is denied the request for that stream. So then Pipewire sends back an error to the, um, to the stream and the application bails out. This is the first security model. Now, there is also a second security model, which is somewhat more advanced, more secure. Um, and it involves a middleman, which we call the portal. This portal is a separate application 
that sits between uh, the container and the host barrier. So it has access, uh, the application has access to it through the container, but the actual process runs on the host. Now the application is not able to access the pipe wire socket um, directly. So it sends an IPC call to the portal um, asking for a connection to Pipewire. This IPC call can be anything from a um, simple socket connection or a DBUS call or something similar. Then the portal connects to Pipewire and again Pipewire applies initial permissions um, to that connection and returns a file descriptor. But in, the, in that case, it doesn't. it's configured so that it doesn't block this file descriptor. Um, and then the Sandbox portal um, gets the connection. It has access to most objects, right, in Pipewire at this point. Um, and then it applies permissions based on what the application is, because the the same container may have different applications that need different sets of permissions. So it checks what the application is and then it applies permissions. It could do that by consulting a database, for example, a database with permissions per application or, or something like that. Um, that's typically what happens and then applies the permissions to Pipewire. So Pipewire now has a very specific set of permissions for this connection. And now the file descriptor of this connection on the sixth step is sent to the application. And the application now has a connection which is restricted. So far, WirePlumber has not been involved, right? So the whole uh, initial permissions um, setting is done by the portal. Then the application creates a stream, right? And this stream goes to Pipewire and from, from this point on, it works like before. So the wire plumber gets notified about this new stream and then it checks, uh, is this client um, allowed to create this kind of stream? If yes, then it links the stream to the target device or target application. If not, then it denies the, the stream and sends an error back. Um, this is a little bit, um, nicer because it takes the logic of applying permissions away from the session manager and moves it into a separate process and it also uh, doesn't expose the socket of pipewire directly in the container um, instead it, it exposes the socket only to the portal and the portal is the only thing that gets exposed to the container um, but otherwise it's pretty much the same Now, I want to show you a demo. In this demo, I have um, uh, two web cameras on, on a machine that uh, are being shared to different applications in separate containers. Uh, containers are, are built with Podman and the, the applications are getting access to both cameras simultaneously, as you will see but they are not getting access to any other resources um, by a pipe wire. Let's see that. So I'm running this demo on my work machine, on my laptop, where I have two USB cameras connected. One is the internal one from the laptop and the, the other is a secondary camera, um, external one. Um, um, as this is my work machine and I'm actually currently using it to record this presentation, you will see uh, in the WP control status uh, command line, you will see that I have a bunch of applications connected here doing both audio and uh, video. I have like four audio devices connected and two video capture devices. and. Currently, I, I'm using OBS Studio to capture uh, this presentation. So it's both capturing from my microphone and from GNOME Shell, which is my desktop shell. And it's uh, screencasting the content of my screen uh, to OBS for capturing. So this is what 
it looks like in in the graph this is the this is these are the nodes inside pipewire and you can see i have gnome shell connected to obs and my um, sound card connected also to obs and while this is happening i am going to start two containers so i have prepared a podman container image um, that is based on on debian unstable and i have added pipe wire and wire plumber in that image and i'm going to start it with a script which looks like this um, so it's it's starting this pipeware debian image that i created and it's binding the pipe wire and wayland sockets to it so that it has access both to pipe wire to capture uh, the video and to my wayland display so that it can show the uh, graphical window output so i've started this container now I'm going to go to the MNT directory, which is uh, where I have put my, my scripts in, in these. Uh, I have mounted my scripts basically there. So <clears throat> I have a bunch of scripts here. Let's look at the camera first. So I have a camera one and camera two scripts that display um, the two different cameras respectively. Let's look at their content. Camera one, both uh, scripts are to streamer pipelines. Um, camera one is capturing with pipewire source from dev video zero. And the second one is capturing again with pipewire source from dev video two. So this is the first camera. And let me start another container here. And this is the other camera. Now I have both, both cameras um, being used simultaneously from two different applications in two different containers. Okay, that's not something new. We could do that before. Now let's try to do something uh, more interesting. I have another script called mix, which takes both cameras using two pipe wire source elements and capturing them both and then rendering them in the same window using uh, GStreamer's compositor element that renders into a single uh, window output. So both cameras are now being captured from this single application in the first container. And I'm going to start the same script in the other container. And you see how both containers capture the same image exactly and they are perfectly synchronized as well. And uh, If you look at performance, Pipewire itself is using only two to two point something, 2.6 it was before, um, of CPU time. While the DST launch processes are using much more, these are doing um, the heavy lifting, the rendering of, of the window. While Pipewire is only capturing from those devices from video 0 and video 2 and moving the buffers um, to these applications in the two different containers without copying the buffers so it only transfers the file descriptors of the of the memory um, that it needs to share and of course this two percent is not just the two um, 
the two video cameras because I, as I said I have OBS Studio running still so this is what it looks like um, I have all these GST launch processes I actually am running two GST launch processes but they appear as four streams here because uh, every Pipewire source element in the streamer creates a new stream to Pipewire so it, it has a different uh, node and that's why I'm seeing two nodes from the first application and two nodes from the second application uh, capturing from these two cameras and then I still have my OBS here recording as usual now that shows the cameras but it didn't uh, show you any security features so how how do we know that this is secure so first of all I would like to compare WP control status which I showed you before this is on the host running because I exited the container and this is WP control status in the container as you can see it doesn't have access to any of these objects no client objects no audio devices no video devices even so it doesn't see what happens in the host it doesn't have a clear picture of the graph um, additionally I could look at the WCLI LS for example which shows a list of available objects and it only gives me two objects um, the pipewire core and the client node factory which is used to construct um, streams while on the host this would give me a huge list of objects um, which are all the nodes and all the ports and all the clients uh, which have been created in pipewire now I because I'm giving access to this um, client node factory I'm giving access to that in the container my clients here camera 1 camera 2 and mix are able to construct streams um, but if they are able to construct streams to capture video maybe they should be able to capture audio as well or playback audio well this is also restricted here and I have created two scripts to showcase this audio capture and audio playback.sh audio capture is also a streamer pipeline using pipewire source to capture audio this time and audio playback again pipewire sync playing back some test audio <clears throat> audio playback.sh shows an error it says not permitted and audio capture to the sage again uh, it, it says not permitted and the same happens with uh, standard pipewire utilities like pw record that captures audio into a wave file so this is supposed to connect to the microphone and record something to this wave file but it says not permitted and again pw play which plays back a wav file not permitted now where this is coming from um, this is coming from the session manager from wireplumber which i have modified in order to um, to check if a process is coming from a container and then restrict its access so i'm using the first security model that I showed you in the slides where the container has full access to the pipewire socket but the session manager restricts uh, what the client can do with the socket so in this script here I have added this function container check that for every new node that connects it checks if the client is coming from a different host so it compares the host name of the client versus the host name of wireplumber and of course this check is not entirely secure in a production system we would have to check something else not the host name um, because this can be manipulated 
but um, for this demo um, this was the simplest form of checking and this is why I've done it like that. So if the host name doesn't match that means the client, client is coming from a container and then I'm also checking the media class of the stream uh, and if it doesn't match stream input video then I'm sending an error saying not permitted and this string here is exactly what gets displayed in the command line over here. So we saw this demo and now I'm going to show you something else that we've built on AGL for uh, for the instrument cluster uh, demo. Uh, on the instrument cluster demo we feature LXC containers um, that um, run separate images of AGL. So there is a host um, that runs Pipewire and there, there are two containers, the instrument cluster container which takes care of displaying the instrument cluster and the IVI container which has the applications of the IVI system. Now the host is taking care of managing the devices like the ALSA devices for audio output and input but the, the, the IVI that has the applications is the one that runs the policy. Uh, even though we have a pipe wire running on the host the actual policy it runs on the IVI and that means that we have a separate instance of WirePlumber running on the IVI that manages uh, all the applications that run in there and um, allows them to securely access the host. And the instrument cluster container uses ALSA so, that, so it doesn't go through pipe wire for audio output um, for stability and security reasons. Um, but every time there is a sound coming out of the instrument cluster, it poses everything that goes on in the IVI. So it sends a message through a, through a separate IPC, um, um, IPC uh, protocol and co causes the, uh, the wire plumber running on the IVI to pose and, and stop producing audio so that we can hear the audio from the instrument cluster. And this is what it looks like in a graph. So the two containers, instrument cluster, and the other container is the IVI container. And we have two instances of wire plumber and one instance of pipe wire. Pipe wire runs on the host. Then we have one instance of wire plumber on the host, which manages the devices. So this is the one that actually discovers what kind of ALSA devices we have and makes them available to pipe wire. And then the second instance of wire plumber in the IVI container is the one that has the policy. So every stream that connects um, from the IVI goes uh, is notified into that instance of wire plumber. And then this instance is the one who decides if the instance can be allowed to connect or not. While the instrument cluster application uh, uses a separate IPC daemon, Pipewire IC IPC. This was written specifically for this purpose. Um, and that uh, when it sends a signal to pose, then this Pipewire IC IPC basically uh, sends a signal to Pipewire and then that signal propagates to WirePlumber and WirePlumber poses everything and uh, disconnects devices and mutes devices and so on. So here I want to show you the interaction between the host container and the IVI container. And for demo purposes, I have created a virtual machine that's running Debian, in which I have copied the WirePlumber configuration from AGL so that um, it has the exact same configuration as in AGL. So with this configuration, now there are two, there are going to be two instances of WirePlumber one instance which is going to be running on the host container and it's going to be managing the ALSA devices and the secondary instance which is going to be running on the guest um, and it's going to be handling uh, linking policy. Now let's start <coughs> by entering the IVI guest. First of all I want to show you that in WP control status right now there is no wire plumber instance running and there are no devices listed. 
Um, <clears throat> now to start with, I'm going to start wire plumber in the container. And I'm going to start it with some debug output so that you can see the activity. And I'm going to start it with the policy configuration file. So you see that it starts, it registers some uh, endpoints which are policy specific. And I'm also going to go to the host. I'm going to verify that there is something connected now. <coughs> there is wire plumber policy and we have all these endpoints registered. These are coming from the IVI container. You can see that the user running this instance is root at IVI. And I'm also going to start wire plumber now here in the host and again with some debug output so that you can see the activity and in this instance um, it's configured to only handle the devices. So it starts and let me find another terminal. So now if I look at WP control status, I can see that um, it, the built-in audio device is also registered now. It's, it's here. And I have uh, another instance of wire plumber running, uh, which is actually on, this, on, on the host container. Now, if I enter the guest again, uh, I will try to play some audio from the guest. Turn left at the next intersection. And it works. That was all. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you very much for attending.